two romances. There's Talk Bookish to Me by Kate Bromley, which is says inspiration can come from the most unlikely and inconvenient sources. Uh, and I think it takes place in New York and it's a bookish book. Kara's life is full of love, fictional, as a best-selling romance novelist and bookstagrammer, she's fine with getting her happily ever after fix between the covers of a book. But right now, not only is Kara's best friend getting married next week, which means big wedding dress stress, wedding stress, but the deadline for her next novel is looming and she hasn't written a single word. Ooh, I like that. And then there's If You Ask Me by Libby Hupster. I think this follows Violet, who is a popular advice columnist. She has an answer for how to politely handle any difficult situation until she discovers her husband, Sam, has been cheating on her. And then her life goes up in flames. Then we have Killer Content by Olivia Blake, a Brooklyn murder mystery. So I think this is a debut. It's uh, Odessa Dean has a lot to learn about life in Brooklyn. So far, she's scored a rent-free apartment in one of the nicest neighborhoods around by cat sitting and has a new job working at an untaped bookstore and cafe. Selling books and craft beer is easy for Odessa, but making new friends and learning how to ride the subway, well, that might take her a little extra time. And I think it's like a cozy murder mystery book, so that'll be fun. Oh, okay. Here's two of my thrillers. We have 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. I've been avoiding this book like the plague, like the COVID-19. Okay, if you know, you know. Uh, but 56 Days follows these two people, Clara and Oliver, who meet right as COVID-19 starts. Then there's lockdowns and they decide well, we're getting to know each other. We kind of like each other a little. So let's move in together. So they moved in together and then 56 days later, one of them is dead. I don't know which one. And I'm pretty sure the other one murdered them. I mean, that's what you would suspect, right? Because we're in lockdowns. No one is allowed. You're not really supposed to go visit people. But if you live together, then, you know, it would be it, it would be easy to assume that the other person killed them. So that sounds really good. However, I have not been able to read any books that even mention COVID-19 yet because it's just been a long couple years, like a long few years about COVID and I don't, I don't want to do that to myself yet, but eventually I would like to read that. Then I have The Quarry Girls by Jess Lowry. This is a small town in North Carolina where they spend their summers swimming in the quarry. Am I saying that right? Quarry? I'm, I'm going with that, but whatever. It's, oh, Minnesota, 1977. Heather and Brenda have a secret, something they saw in the dark, something they can't forget. They've decided to never tell a soul, but their vow is tested when their friends disappear. The second girl to vanish in a week, and yet the authorities are reluctant to investigate. This is a horror novel by Josh Mallerman. This is Unbury Carol. The only reason that I wanted this, which like I'm super excited about now, 
is because people have compared on Barry Carroll. I've heard that it's like a dark and twisted version of Alice in Wonderland, but for adults and make it for. Then I have I Am Watching You by Teresa Driscoll. This follows a stalker. So Ella is on the subway when she sees these older men uh, flirting with teenagers. And then one of the teenage girls goes missing. And Ella is wondering if she should go to the police and tell them what she saw and describe the men and, you know, just be like a helpful citizen when someone starts stalking her. Then there's How I Lost You by Jenny Blackhurst. She has no memory of what happened. But Suzanne Webster has spent the last three years. Yeah, what was that? This is How I Lost You by Jenny Blackhurst. This follows this woman named Suzanne, who, uh, Everyone is telling her that she murdered her 12-week-old son, Dylan, three years ago. And she's been locked up in, like, the psych ward ever since. She's getting released. But now she starts seeing Dylan around her neighborhood. I don't know if it's, like, pictures or, like, actually sees him or it, what that means. But I'm excited to dive into this one. Then there's Are You Afraid of the Dark by Seth C. Adams. I don't know anything about this. I just know that that cover is freaking pretty. And I think that it has to do with this boy going into the woods alone at night. And uh, I think that he sees something that he's not supposed to, but I don't know for sure. Then there's The Last Guests by J.P. Pomeroy. This is a thriller that has a bunch of reviews on the back. Ever have the feeling you're being watched? So this follows Lena and Kane, who are going to their property on the lake for a weekend and they have a stalker and that's all I know. Okay and then I have a book by Andrea Bartz and Julia Bartz and they are sisters and they both write books. I read I Was Never Here, We Were Never Here by Andrea Bartz and it had potential. It wasn't like an all-time favorite for me. It was okay, like a three and a half star, but I do see potential in her writing, so I wanted to pick this up. And then everyone is just hiding the right, hyping up the writing retreat by Julia Bartz, so that's why I got that one. I am a little, I am a little scared on this one because most people love this book. But I have heard some negative reviews, and it follows a bunch of writers, which I don't like, generally like books that follow a writer. But there's a lot of them. They all go to this, like, retreat, and, like, dark games and creepy things start happening. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm a little nervous for this one. Then The Herd by Andrea Bartz. I don't know what this book is about. You're welcome. Then I have Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. Uh, 
to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure that this is going to be a book for me. Uh, but I did see this. I think I saw this reading blog where Gabby read this. I don't remember if she liked it or not, but it has like, I think it follows these actresses and actors on this movie set and then people start being murdered on the movie set. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you are new around here. Thank you. Bye. Did you feed them earlier? Oh, I fed them in the morning. Okay, well, Bella's eating.